So here I want to um, show how velocity could be described uh, in the polar coordinate system. Uh, so first let me um, define what is a polar coordinate. By polar coordinates uh, we mean r and theta, radial and transverse. So we have one axis r and one axis theta. r for radial and theta for transverse. Uh, so basically if you have uh, a path, a curved path, and a particle is traveling along this curved path, we need to keep track of the position of this particle from some origin. So if it's called this origin O, we can keep track of the position of this guy using a position vector R. Now radial axis basically is defined as the extension of this radi uh, 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 position vector. So if you just extend this, this becomes the R-axis. And perpendicular to the R-axis would be the theta or transverse axis. So this would be the theta axis. Uh, so uh, similarly, we can define now the unit vector along the radial axis and transverse axis. So a unit vector along the radial axis is typically denoted by u sub r and a unit vector along the transverse axis is denoted by u sub theta. So you have to remember that unit vectors are vectors whose magnitude is one unit. So magnitude is one and then u sub r just implies that it's along the radial axis or is pointing in the radial direction and u sub theta is pointing in the transverse direction. So now in order for us to describe velocity in this coordinate system, uh, what we have to do is uh, define first the uh, position vector r. So r as a vector has some magnitude, which is basically the length of this vector here, r. And since r is r axis is defined as the extension of position vector r, so simply we multiply that by the unit vector u sub r. So basically we are saying that r has to be along the r axis. Now velocity is defined as the rate of change of this position vector r. So if we go ahead and try to take the derivative of this position vector r, that would be the derivative of r as a vector, remember has magnitude r, along the unit vector u sub r. So here we have to use a uh, product rule. So by product rule, let me move to the next page. So, so far we said that velocity is the derivative of the position vector, uh, position vector r as a vector, which is uh, ddt of r times u sub r. So using product rule, we have to take the derivative of the first now the derivative of r is, why don't we use the dot notation, so that would be dr dt, so whenever we see the dot, that means uh, dr dt or time derivative. So derivative of the first times the second, which would be u sub r plus first times the derivative of the second. which is the derivative of the unit vector u sub r. So the question now is, what is this derivative of unit vector u sub r? Now, without going through the, the, uh, the detail of this, the derivative of unit vector u sub r actually happens to be theta dot times u sub theta. In other words, it has a magnitude of theta dot and it's pointing in the transverse direction. So if you replace uh, this by theta dot u sub theta, our velocity becomes r dot u sub r plus r theta dot u sub theta. So basically what we get out of this is that 
we have a radial component u sub r and a transverse component u sub theta this r dot is the radial component of velocity and this r theta dot is the transverse component of velocity so here I put v sub r the radial component has a magnitude of r dot v sub theta is r theta dot and if you want to find the magnitude of velocity magnitude of velocity would be square root of v sub r squared plus v sub theta squared and we have to understand that velocity at any instant is tangent to the path so if this is the velocity uh, it can have a radial component and a transverse component so let's say if this is the r axis and this is the transverse axis part of this magnitude of velocity is the radial so this is the radial part and this is the transverse part v sub r and v sub theta